Now we want to deal with the best player of the 19th, early 19th century, the American Paul Charles Morphy. And a good way to look at him a little bit closer would be to look in the players index, player. And here we see some Morphys. Four. And here's Paul. And here we see his father Alonso and his uncle Ernest, the younger brother of Alonso. A good chess player. Played several games against Paul. Uh, Paul was born in 1837, in June 22, and he learned to read very early, with five years. And there were already chess books or magazines in those old days? Yeah, and he found a big chess bibliotheque because the whole family was playing chess. His two elder brothers stopped playing chess when he <laughs> <laughs> and they became too strong. Uh, it's frustrating, of course. But the father and the uncle played with him, and even the uncle, the brother of his, of his mother. And his mother was a good musician and even a composer. And um, Paul loved not only chess, he, was, he loved very much music. And the mother took him very early and very often to the opera. And Paul has one big talent. He had a photographic memory. So when he has read a book, he, the book became useless for him <laughs> <laughs> because he knew everything. What he, when he, what he one time read, he knew up to the end of his life. Ah, he had a photographic memory. Yeah. And even with music, with the, he, he, should, he had a special memory. When he came home from opera, he was singing some, some music and he could memorize exactly the, the music, what he has learned was the, the first time just in the opera. So his memory was fantastic. Something special, in, uh, I would say, in the first. So, and... Um, but to become a good chess player, you not only need a good memory. There. Only with a good memory, you cannot become a very good player, I think. Okay. He, we see his first games he played in, in the family circle. Maybe I should mention that in 1845, there was the first uh, USA championship match played in his town in New Orleans between Stanley from New York against Rousseau. He lived that time in New York and um, Stanley won, but in 1845 he, the eight-year-old Paul Morphy saw, was, was visitor at this match, 31 games, and he was looking every game and he was going together with his uncle. His uncle was second of Rousseau, so ah. his uncle was the second best player in, in, in New Orleans. So he had, he had a big bibliotheque. He had everything that was published, every, every magazine, every book. Yeah? And his uncle, who was a very good chess player, so uh, fantastic uh, conditions. conditions. And uh, he was not a, a boy who, who, who liked to run around to, to, to <laughs> to be <beat> this <laughs> voice. He was, he preferred to sit quiet and, and, and uh, read books. So, uh, and early he became a very strong player. Uh, with, t with 12 years already, he had a result against this mentioned Rousseau, I think 35 games, and Morphy lost only five out of 35, won 30. Yeah? And Rousseau played for the U.S. championship. <laughs> so, and um, Paul Morphy only 12 years old. This really sounds amazing. And here we see Jakob Löwenthal. 
he came to new, the, the, the famous Hungarian chess player who left uh, Hungary and then he wanted to find a new a new place where to live. First he was looking in Germany around but then he was going to USA and he visited New Orleans and even this Löwenthal who was playing one year later in London a good tournament in this famous tournament he was beaten by by Paul so the was two wins by by Paul and only one draw and this draw was a completely one <laughs> position so even some Americans say the the result was three to 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 no ah, but okay but well we we want to stick with facts yeah and um, then he played against his good chess friend Morian Charles ah. And it's a lifelong friendship from the school time on up to uh, the end of his life. But they played odds games, yeah, so with a lot of material. Yeah, Morian learned chess around this time when they were, how old, 16 around, 16, 17. Then Morian learned chess and they started with odds by <laughs> giving <laughs> the queen and so on. And the queen is a lot of material, obviously. And anyway, so we see in modern times, queen odds games. Yeah, this they, they won't and make what sense. And what is all. silly is to, to <laughs> say when I say he played so many games against Rousseau, all these games are not uh, safe. We we lost these games. Nobody has has written down the games, and Paul did not have to write this down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and nobody else has written this down, especially the loser not. <laughs> so uh, maybe sometimes the uncle maybe has written something. So this is a minimum of, of games we, we, we have today. And uh, it's still 413 games yeah. in the historical mega base is still quite a lot of material. So we see the outfit is, is new. We, we see there's some and now it's 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 better readable what is happening. We see uh, this one few this is an odds knight b1 is given rook e, uh, not so many tournament given. games yeah mostly odds games simul games uh, friendly game casual games friendly games yeah what what can you do when you are so strong and the others are so weak yeah? <laughs> uh, today you can give uh, in, give advantage of time but at that time they there were no clocks so the, the usual this was the usual way to give odds yeah and uh, but then came the big tournament uh, the first american chess congress and as we know morphy was the winner of this tournament in the final he won against the german player uh, where is this here Louis Paulsen. Louis Paulsen eh? Yes. Uh, he was the finest. I think you can see a lot of annotated games. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after this, uh, or even between, he played a lot of blindfold games. Louis Paulsen was a specialist for this, and even they played some blindfold games. And, uh, and he played a lot of casual games. So, and, uh, so he in, in America, he found no opponent anymore. And so this come the, the uh, idea was born to go to uh, Europe uh, and to 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 play against the best Europeans, especially against Howard Staunton, who was in for the Eng English speaking world the the best player of the world because he was the he was the winner of the famous match. English call it England against France, the match between Saint Amand against Staunton in the year 1843. Okay, we can deal with ago, that right? in more detail in the next clip, but let's see uh, uh, games from Morphy's childhood. So I, I just let me just tell you here, we can we can see, but let me go through here. Mm -hmm. we see okay. He played in London. Ah, yeah, in Euro Europe. Ah, okay. In Europe, mm -hmm. and, then he, and then this, he played a match against Löwenthal. Mm -hmm. And 
Ah, then played in uh, Blindfold Sermo. Play, uh -huh. They played uh, against uh, Harvard's and the, the biggest match ah, uh, yeah. against Andersen, who was maybe better a better player than th at that time than Staunton. He, <laughs> he was a winner of London 1800. Slightly dangerous territory, I guess. <laughs> uh. And yeah, you see, I'm German. <laughs> 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 and uh, and at the end, after after this trip, he. The result from Murphy was there's no 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 one in the world <laughs> uh, he, he can play in equal terms so he decided to play only privately chess and he played uh, especially against some friends Morian and, and his friends uh, Arnaud de Riviere and even He became president of the chess club in New Orleans and he gave some symbols in, in, in New Orleans. But anyway, so let's have a closer look to the style of Morphy. He prepared some games. Here's the first published game by Paul Morphy against this mentioned French player Eugene Rousseau who came to New Orleans, by the way, a town, a bilingual town. Morphy, uh, Morphy could speak French uh, as good as English. Uh, Probably he then also profited from French chess books or French chess magazines. Uh, yeah, he, he from, the, from the magazine, ah. La, La Régence. Ah, yes. But even he, he studied uh, German, German uh, uh, magazines, yeah. Uh, also a big advantage, of course. And I don't know if he, how good was his German. <laughs> I found no information, but he could uh, read the, 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 the chess books. Uh, in, the ma chess in many uh, languages. And I think this was probably also one of his advantages over the, his contemporaries. As you can see in the text, this was the first published book. Morphy was, at that time, 12 years oh. old. And this was the first published book because his uncle Ernest sent this game to Paris to Kizaritsky to publish this in his magazine La Regence, oh. and uh, together with a with a letter. What is very interesting, but we have no no time to study this carefully now. It's up to you. <laughs> you found a lot of information even in these informa in, in these uh, end of dated games uh, historical notes. So we have a very interesting and typical position after the in this and Morphy White has to move. Yeah, this must be better for White. White is White has a strong initiative. Black has this traffic jam with the knight E. Seven and one natural move seems to my eyes rock E1. Yeah, this looks very to make pressure against the weak pawn yeah. E5. Eh? Yes. And this is a very normal continuation. <laughs> Definitely. And the strong one, maybe the best one. But we, we learn here something about the style of Paul and what he was looking for and what he what kind of chess uh, he loved. Uh, this his personal style. Mm -hmm. Okay. And his move was a oh. sacrifice of a piece. Yeah? Great move uh, for such a young player. Very creative, uh, non-trivial. But a check is here in, in, the, in the air on F7. Mm -hmm. And the unlucky Rousseau took, took, the, <laughs> ah, okay, well. took <laughs> the knight. And uh, okay. so he ran into a devasting attack. But no, he lost uh, this this uh, this rook, and he could not capture the. He could not capture the knight. Knight. A real nightmare for Rousseau. So you see, and <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's over. Next example of of uh, his style. On his 12th birthday, he played an interesting game against 
his uncle Ernest, blindfold. I think only more. I, I, it's not sure who played, uh, of if both played blindfold. I think only Paul played blindfold. But anyway, mm -hmm. so um, here we have. It was an open game, and after some. Twelve after the thirteenth move, we mm -hmm. got this interesting position. I guess White could go here into an end game, taking on d8, playing knight x e5, and White, White must have a very large advantage. This is an easy, this is an obvious and easy way, and uh, with a with an uh, easy game. Ne? Yeah, yeah, I think most modern players would play this smaller team. Okay, checking some tactics and then seeing that it's not so clear while the end game is absolutely clear. But the, the young Paul did not like changing queens. <laughs> he wanted to have a more complicated games. His birthday party needs to be uh, spiced up a bit. So this is the more easy continuation and the point F7 is, yeah. is, is very, very weak. No? Why it must be much better here. So, and he played objective uh, the weaker move, queen b3, because now black can defend good enough. And black has the bishops. And he, and this was his idea. And <sighs> ah, okay. Threatening to the queen. Yeah. And to say this is a weaker move <laughs> means <laughs> you can only say after you have a big insight into the game because it's not so clear and so easy. No, this looks at first be side be of Because the question is how can black defend this? And Ernest now had a very difficult job. Job to, to save this game. Right? Yeah, to, to the, it looks to save this position. Extremely dangerous if the queen moves. White has uh, rook uh, e7 to reinforce the attack. And at very first sight, it looks close to winning. But deeper inspection shows that black still has amazing resources to defend. Maybe Misha Tal. Would have found the best shot in on his go on a good day. <laughs> yeah, to tell you the facts, the, the <laughs> game was very short. The game continued queen d8, and after ah. queen is seven, the rook is seven. There the is no defense, and it's over. The game was over. Yeah. Yes. And he he had fantastic <laughs> defensive <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> Maybe Bishop takes f2, yeah, this really blows like, me. I'd like to show you this because it's too, too nice. <laughs> the first idea is to play queen b8. To exchange the rook e7 and bishop takes f2 to relieve the pressure by queen change, yeah. Yeah. And now black can equalize. Uh, free the queen. Yeah. Black is on. And this equalizes into the end game. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a fantastic way <laughs> for black. Amazing shot. And this this was found in the modern times, yeah, or it was it already I've known I've to I've the old sources? I found it by Com Commodore. No, ah. no, all these all the annotations are. Uh, ah, you added the uh, annotations. Yeah, ah. ah, okay. This. So th this is found by Commodore Ten. Yeah. Amazing, really an amazing shot, which also. In the old days, um, the defense was much weaker than in modern computer times. Yeah, but anyway, what's what's the point? Okay, if the rook takes the rook, so the king must take only move. The rook is is is, is ca can be captured. Huh? Yeah. So and then comes the next big move. Are amazing, really amazing. <laughs> because on e8 we take back with check. Yeah, this really is amazing. And the queen is the white queen is even lost. Yeah. yeah, and then black is better, of course. And then black's mm -hmm. bishop really counts for something. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic discovery. Next example: A blindfold game between uh, Louis Paulsen against Paul Morphy during the. 
Congress in, in the first USA Congress. In between, they made an excursion and uh, and they played. They were the b biggest opponent, but mm. it, this, uh, it doesn't matter. They they on the on the trip they they <laughs> they played three blindfold games, and uh, one is very interesting for the style of Paul Mafia. I was impressed by this. Mm -hmm. the, the question is, okay, Black has a nice position. Knight, White has. Ugly pawns and the, the knight is very nice. Yeah. Yes. And uh, but but uh, black must be better, Paul, but it's not so easy but to for make. Paul, it's not only this <laughs> slightly positional advantage. He was always looking for attacking moves, and uh, the, the, the the attacking move he found a very interesting and good idea. G5. Yes. And it followed knight f2. Yeah, but okay, knight d3 looks a bit odd to my eyes because it allows uh, black to execute the plan smoothly. Maybe g4 is more with silent, why black is still better, but maybe white is better yeah, the, the, this is chances. To give, giving better defensive chances, yeah. But the but position anyway, remains maybe, ugly. maybe black even could here play. Ah. Earlier G4, yeah. So, oh, okay. but then let's. Uh, I think my my point is to to, to show the idea mm -hmm. G5. Yeah. And both played blindfold. We should say and, and maybe I'm not sure. Maybe they played three games uh, at the same time blindfold each <laughs> other. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, ah yeah. And you see, mm -hmm. and now black has some at, uh, some attack. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> black is attacking with all pieces, and white cannot introduce all pieces into the defense. And black, black has attack. Uh, he has Rock attack. Takes G2. Yes or no? Yes. And, and now exactly what can you and what can he do? He can. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, he this doesn't look good. <laughs> no good move. And what is here? Oi. Looks better. Ch chess base 14, recommending to take on G2. And Morphy took <laughs> indeed on G2, his mating attack. Yeah, rook check and mate. Okay. Nice idea. Here we have Barnes. In now we are in England, 1858, and he played some, 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 some casual games. And uh, and I think Barnes was the one who played the, the most of uh, the most games of our opponents. So Bishop d5 and attacking the knight c6. Which at very first sight looks uh, annoying for black. And knight e5 is, <sighs> is an idea because the weak point in, in white's position is the knight at, at f3. But it deep, it's deeper than it looks at very first sight. Uh, yeah, but it's not so easy as it looks first. Yeah? So, because when you look, when you go here now, this is clear, but after queen d2, you say, oh, how can <laughs> I, I cannot mate him by d because the queen can interpose on g5. Yeah? Did Morphy miss this defense? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? There's, there's another point, and this makes the, uh, the game interesting. Uh -huh. And Laska uh, has said they come in a combination of rare or orgi originality. Yeah? yeah. And this is Emanuel Lasker or Emanuel in the scrapbooks, yeah. Emanuel Lasker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, normally when when you hear Lasker it's it's mostly Emanuel for for Edward they write Edward. <laughs> <laughs> so and Ah uh, yeah. Black is able to capture <laughs> some material. 
and the open G file is Besides not, the issue. Is not so nice for white. <laughs> not nice is good. And we see. But the combination is very nice uh, with this point and with the G file in the end. Black has three like extra pawns and it's yeah, all. And we, we can finish this. Yeah. It's finished now. Yeah. It's finished. Yeah, this was a uh, chess biography of Paul Morphy. In the next clips, we want to deal with uh, his games against Staunton, the number one in England. So you can look forward to that.